Today we're going to look at the 2019 for your response exam. We're going to do question two, step tracker. All right, so first of all, I want you guys to go to my course website. I've put a link in the description, and you're going to get two files. So you're going to get this APCSA 2019 PDF that's got the question in it. And you're going to go over here to question two, and you're going to get step tracker.zip. So that's got the Blue Jay project file in it. Okay, so once you got those two files, let's go ahead and take a look at the question. So we're going to do question two, and this involves making a step tracker class. So this one's kind of interesting because they really don't give you a lot of code framework to go on by. So, you know, they sort of give you a very basic uh, framework, and you have to fill it in. You have to pretty much write the entire class by yourself. The good news is that they do give you quite a considerable number of clues in order to do this. So if you, if you know what you're doing and you know how to pick up on the clues, then this should be pretty straightforward. Okay, so please go ahead and read through the question carefully, and then you know I'm going to go ahead and write the code for it. All right, so here's my BlueJ project folder. So I've got the strep tracker Java file open here, and now let's go ahead and write this class. So a couple of things we need: um, we need uh, private instance variables, we need a constructor, and then we need some methods. So Let's go ahead and see if they have to give some clues. Uh, so they say the step tracker object is created with a parameter that defines the minimum number of steps. So that's the first clue. And I can see here when they create the step tracker object, they do it um, in a way that uh, they have a 10,000, number 10,000 here, which I suppose defines the minimum number of steps in order for a day to be considered active. So that's kind of my first clue. Right, so I can make this constructor, you know, by looking at this, uh, the way that they, they make it here, uh, by the statement, and I see that I need to put in some, some integer value here. Okay, so that's minimum steps. So it's probably a good idea um, to consider that to be my first instance variable. Okay, so I'm going to go down here, and um, I'm going to do private, it's going to be an int, and I think I'll call it threshold. Okay, we're going to have to fill in some other stuff, but let me just continue um, by considering the constructor, right? So, you know, here they build it, you know, they have the statement in which they run the constructor. I can see that uh, there's just one parameter, which is the minimum steps, uh, which I call threshold. So I can go ahead and, and set that up. So let me go ahead and do that. Public, and this is called step tracker okay so this is going to take in a single parameter so it's going to call it t and now i can set my threshold to be that uh, parameter value so i'm just going to say threshold gets t okay obviously there's going to be other stuff in it but i'm going to go ahead and continue um so now they go ahead and they say all right we're gonna, um, the step tracker class is gonna have the three methods, three following methods in it. So we need to have this add daily steps, active days, and average steps. Okay, add daily steps accumulates information about steps, readings taken once per day. Now, I need to figure out what uh, the return value is. It doesn't say anything about it. So let me just go down here and see if there's any clues within this table. Uh, I see when they return, okay, so when they run average um, down here, when they run add daily steps, it takes in a value, and I don't see anything on the output, so that tells me add daily steps must be declared void. Okay, so, um, okay, and it also takes in a single int, the parameter. Um, so let me go ahead and do that. So public void add daily steps okay it takes in a parameter a uh, single parameter of type int so i believe that is just steps i'll just call it steps okay so let me just uh, continue and, and just fill in the rest of the three methods that they mentioned in the same manner so i just look at active days returns a number of active days Okay, so looking here, I see when they run active days, it doesn't have anything in the brackets that tells me there's no parameters, and it returns a zero. So this is an integer, 
So that uh, you know gives me some clues about how I should write this method, or the method header anyway. So now we have uh, public, okay, and this returns an int value, so there's int, and now we have active days, and it does not take any parameters, so I can just leave the uh, blank in between those two parentheses. And that's pretty much it. So let me go ahead and look at the third one. So now we have this average steps. So I can see when they run average steps, uh, I get a 0, 0.0 here, and then you know, sometimes there's a 7,000.0, 9,000.0. So that tells me it must return a double. Okay, so let me go ahead and write that up. So public double, and then it's just average steps. Okay, so now I've got this frame framework set up. Um, now all that's left is for me to just go back to the question, look up some clues, and just you know figure out the implementation for each of these. I think some might be easier than others. Okay, so I have a threshold. Um, I get some steps in there. I think active day is probably going to be the easiest. So it says here that... Um, it keeps track of some active days. So active days returns a number of active days. I think that it's going to be a good uh, private instance variable. Um, they probably need you to keep track of the number of active days. So that's got to be a private instance variable, and you know it's probably something that gets returned with this particular method, active days. So let me go ahead and make that variable, so I'll come up here, um, so let me say private int num active, and then I can just go here and set that to zero, so num active gets zero. Okay, and then I can go ahead and just fill this in, so here I'm just saying return num active, right, so if we want to get the number of active days, then we just return that. So this is going to keep track of the number of active days we have. And you know, in the constructor, it starts at zero. So that makes a lot of sense. So that's pretty much it for that active days method. OK, I think I'll go on to average steps. What does average steps say? So average steps to say um, returns the average number of steps per day calculated by dividing the total number of steps taken by the number of days tracked. Um, okay, so it looks like I'm going to have to make two more instance variables. It seems to me that I'm going to have to keep track of the total number of steps that this person has taken, you know, over, you know, whenever they start this app. And then, you know, the number of days it gets tracked. Okay, so those are two more instance variables that I can put in. So let me go up here and create some more instance variables. So private int, and I think I'll call this one total steps. All right, and then we needed the, uh, the number of days. So we need private int num days. Okay, so that looks really good. So now I have that information. So total steps get zero, and then num days get zero. So, you know, this uh, app has all these things set to zero when you start, so that actually does make a lot of sense. So now we can come down to here and say, all right, what's the number of average steps? Well, it's just the, uh, the number of steps divided by the number of days, right? The total steps that we just um, made here. So the only, uh, the little, you know, kind of wrinkle here is that these are both integer values. And this returns a double. So I'm going to have to take care of that in a clever way. One of the easiest ways to do this is just to multiply by 1.0. And then, you know, that takes care of that small problem. Otherwise, you get this integer divide and it just messes things up. Okay, so total steps and then, you know, divide and then num days. And then that'll take care of that method. Okay, so let me go ahead and finish off by writing this add daily steps. Let me go back and see if there's any more clues. 
Add daily steps. Accumulates information about steps and readings taken once per day. Okay, add daily steps. So it does take in a parameter. Um, and I suppose that's the number of steps that the person took, you know, in a given session. So it seems to me that this should get added in to the total steps that we just made. So that's the first thing that we need to do. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that. So I uh, take in steps. So the first step is total steps plus equals, and then we just add in steps. Now, it also does something else. Um, okay, the other thing that this does is, you know, once, I suppose you run this at night or something and just, you know, figure out how many steps you took during the day. And then, you know, you'd run this maybe before you go to bed. And then if that's the case, we need to increment day by one. So num days gets incremented by one. And then the last step is that we have this threshold, right? So if you uh, meet or exceed this threshold, that means your day was active. So not only does it keep track of days, it also keeps track of active days, right? So you know, maybe Monday you weren't active, and then Tuesday you were, and Wednesday you weren't, and so on and so forth. Um, so we can actually make a conditional here which would um, calculate whether or not that particular day was active or not. So I can say this, well, if, uh, you know, steps, cursor, okay, so if steps is greater than or equal to the threshold, then, you know, we know we've, we know that that particular uh, day was active, so we can increment active days by one. So we just do this, num active plus plus. And this does not return any value, so um, we leave off. We don't uh, include any return statement here. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. So it seems to me that I've got you know, the entire step tracker class uh, written. So it seems to me I got all my instance variables I need. It seems to me I've got the constructor that seems to work fine. Um, I've got the three methods here that we need to have. So I hit compile, it seems to run or Okay, hit compile here, it's compiling. Okay, so when all the lines are gone, that means it's finished. So let's go ahead and test it now. So let's see what answer we get when we run this step tracker class. And seems to me my computer's a little, a little slow. Let's see, ah, there we go, okay. I don't know, maybe. Got a little freeze business going on there. All right, there we go. All right, so usually, <clears throat> okay, so usually is not this slow. I'm not sure what's going on. Ooh, this computer's very quick. Okay, but I see something popping up. All right, so I think that's right. So we get not a number, you know, then the 7,012, and that, you know, if you compare it, with the output you get. Okay, so, you know, we've got zero, 7,000, one, 9,002, and this 10,222. So that does seem to work. Um, let me go ahead and one more thing, which is run this test bench. So hopefully that'll work. So we'll click run tests and we get some results. And it's popping up very slowly today. But there it is. So we do have 10 green checks, and that tells me my code is fine. Okay, so that was the 2019 for response question two step tracker. It is complete. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.